Out of all the shows that I have on the Nightmind channel, I can't deny that the one that gets me the most excited is Night Vision. My roots are embedded in the territory of media like Marble Hornets, Slenderman web series, found footage, and homebrew, do-it-yourself independent filmmaking brought online. There's a certain kind of incredible that comes from witnessing someone make a truly spectacular project while being just an average person. No degree, no team, no major equipment or impressive resources, no real experience, People who think of an idea, write it out, grab their camera and go, facing an entire world of logic and common sense that says, yeah, it won't be anything special and it won't really be seen but you can try, only to prove all of that wrong and show they were right to hope, to be so bold as to make something and dream for a great outcome. Nothing reminds me more strongly about why I do this and finding new channels I immediately want to make a night vision video about. I cover a lot of material, and I'll confess that as I've gotten into the groove of doing this as my job as well as my passion project, I've often found myself settled into an attitude of seeing so much of what I cover in the vein of business as usual. Finding content like the topic of this episode of Night Vision reminds me that what I do is never just business as usual, that I stand for something. And these people, these creators, are the very reason I exist and will continue to fight in my territory for the recognition and success they deserve. I may not find these reminders of my mission statement all the time, but when I do, it feels like rebirth. And I'll tell you what, I haven't been this excited since the West Records. Now you know I'm serious. I've been getting leads from you guys on Twitter and Tumblr about a channel called Hi, I'm Mary Mary for a while now, and again, this proves to be a case where I really, really need to look into things the moment I get multiple requests in a short time span. Hi, I'm Mary Mary, or him for short is a series presented in a style that we haven't seen for a while. Straight-laced, linear, live-action storytelling by a normal person in a horrifying situation. On July 9th, 2016, the first video was uploaded by the title character, Mary, asking a very simple question. Is there anyone out there? Mary, you see, is desperately in need of some form of communication. She reports that she's trapped in a house, which she woke up in last week with barely any memory of who she is, where she is, or how she got there. There are really only two things that she knows beyond what she can learn from the contents of the house. Her name is Mary, and she believes it's her parents' house. Or at the very least, a copy. Some aspects of the house don't feel quite right according to memory. We're shown that Mary cannot get outside at all. The doors will not open, and the windows will not break. No one else has been seen. Her only companion at the moment is a camera, which she's been using to record her stay in this house on the edge of reality. She also has a computer and internet connection, allowing her to use Twitter and, of course, upload. But again, it's as if the entire world has disappeared except for her. No one else can be found on Twitter. No one else can be found online. During daytime in the house, nothing bad occurs. But at night, that's when the house becomes a truly scary place. So, before we move on to what happens next, I want to take a moment to try and express my experience to you and the impact it had on me seeing it for the first time. Back during the entire month of August, I worked on the starting phase of how to make a web series, going over so many lessons and concepts I picked up and the insight I've gained seeing series after series after series, and then I delivered the whole bulk of it all at once in September. Every single potential item on a checklist for how to set up a series just got checked off in the very first video for Mary Mary. It's like this series was specifically designed to pass every last challenge I could have thrown at it. Give us a reason the camera is on. Give us a reason footage is being uploaded. Let us know why the situation warrants the camera. Give us a setup interesting enough to make a web series. Give us a character we can empathize with. Give us a reason to want more videos. Every. Single. Checkpoint. Passed. Mary wakes up in a house all alone that seems to exist in a pocket dimension. She can't get out through windows or doors at all, and she has no memory of how she got here or where she is. 
Okay, awesome. Now we have a cool mystery. She's been left with a camera and a computer hooked up to the internet. Perfect. She's been literally given a method of documentation and a gentle push to use it by her captors, and her situation warrants doing so for practical reasons and psychological reasons. The character has all the push that she needs to be filming and uploading in a situation where we are immediately interested in what's happening and we believe that she would be doing this. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. On top of all of that, even though she's uploading, she lets us know immediately she's never going to be able to hear us. Or at least, not for a while, until there's a break in the story. Somehow this footage got to us, but it's very much a sort of everyman hybrid situation. One-way mirror type of reality. We cannot interfere with events even if we can see them, so there's no issue of the character having to ignore good advice from the audience, or any of the issues of having an audience for this in the first place. We know the house is paranormal because of the setup, and clearly she's in danger. This is not just a case of something odd. This is a character who has been presented to us as the documenting uploader, with reasons to believe she's documenting and uploading, in a situation where we can empathize with her struggle. And not only do we want to find out how she got here, what the house is, and how she gets out, we need to make sure this person we've just established empathy with survives, because clearly, she is also in danger, and the danger is a monster. Oh my god, I cannot believe how many checkpoints this series just passed in the very first episode. And also, can we give some praise early on for two classic tropes being used in new ways? The text that appears is very much a callback to Marble Hornets, but it feels different in its presentation entirely, and it's constantly being messed with as a form of video distortion. You're going to notice going through the series that nearly all the distortion effects used are completely new. I have not seen them before in a Slender series or anything like it, and it gives the series its very own style, character, and intrigue. And before we move on to the next video, let's bring up one more bit of praise. The Twitter account associated with this channel is doing pretty much exactly what a Twitter account for a series like this needs to do, providing supplemental bonus material to the adventure, rather than making it crucial that a viewer watches the videos and follows on Twitter. If you end up using YouTube as a major facet of the storytelling for your linear storytelling series, it really does need to be your main path, with Twitter, Tumblr, Facebook, or any other social media aspects serving bonus material and deeper characterization that is not crucial for YouTube-only viewers. This is a very big lesson for all of you following the blue path and how to make a web series. So, let's keep the ball rolling now, because the surprises that come from him just keep getting better and more impressive from a creative and technical standpoint. The next video comes out on July 24th, 2016, and it's titled, Dislikeness. Mary says she's beginning to figure out the house and how it works. The first problem you might think of in this situation is food. Mary solves that very quickly, showing us how the moment you remove something from its place, a duplicate arrives. How is that possible? Again, we want to find out. 25 seconds into the second video, and we already have another mystery that makes us want to keep watching. Mary shows a bit of character next, revealing there is running water as the shower is working, saying she won't smell as well as not starving, and we have audio of her singing in the shower. Already, she's become quite comfortable with her camera and potential audience, if any exists beyond the lack of reception she perceives on her end. Next, a real mystery add-on for us that makes things freakier. At night, the lights only work sometimes. We have a few scenes of Mary hanging around the house, trying to stay sane and figure out what's happening, followed by a shot of her exploring a bookshelf and letting us know that she's been looking for clues about her identity. A picture of her is found, and then, in a very sudden transition with some distortion, we get a personal comment from Mary. I don't look good in it. I want you to keep in mind what we just saw as we move to the next scene, okay? Mary finds a picture of herself, says she doesn't look good in it, tries to brush that comment aside. We move to Mary in the bathroom washing her hands in front of a mirror cabinet. She's spent a lot of time in these videos so far hiding her face from us, stating that she's a little bit shy, so she's keeping off camera. We get the scene with her finding the picture, not liking it, which gives us a sense of the real reason that she's hiding from us. And then this happens. Ha 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 ha!
she's so much prettier than me, I want to break the mirrors. And then the video ends. So right now I'm thinking that half of you appreciated that just as much as I did and maybe the rest of you thought it was hokey or silly. Let me explain why I think this was awesome and flawless. First, I think we can all agree that pulling off the effect for the girl in the mirror was an achievement. I know exactly what this kind of editing involves, and it would have taken some effort to make sure it happened correctly and lined up just right, especially with Mary's timing for reacting to it in post-production. Second, nobody else really ever does this. I think I've seen something like this before in a web series, maybe, but on the whole, never this brazen and in your face before. This is one of those moments where I realize I've been waiting for someone to do this in a series and didn't even consciously think about it. Third, the creator of him pulls off another expert maneuver in beating a challenge I began addressing in how to make a web series but haven't talked about in depth yet. Presenting ordinarily cheesy, tropey things like evil disembodied laughter and totally getting away with it. This is one of the only times I have ever fully supported it and can say it works. It's justified and it was smart to use. Think about it. Mary is trapped in a house removed from reality itself. We can already see this place is going to keep surprising us and is under the power forces that we do not understand. We know it has monsters inside. This is a haunted house attraction that Mary is legitimately stuck in, which means even cheesy, silly things like disembodied evil laughter can and will happen. The way it's coming across, and the way the monster in the mirror is acting, you can tell the forces attacking Mary know this would be silly and dumb under any other circumstance. But now, because Mary is actually inside this situation and can be subjected to it as a real event that she cannot escape, anything goes. It works entirely. And if the camera ended up here because the forces in control put it there, then they want Mary to look like a fool reacting to the type of cheap, silly scares and sound effects you would find in a bad indie horror game. The mirror monster is mockery on the highest level. It knows how bad Mary's self-image is. It knows what she did to her own picture earlier, trimming up her body and cutting off her own head to fix herself. The monster in the mirror is taking the form of a personal demon, laughing at her while showing off everything that she wishes she could be, and enjoying every moment of this silly, cheesy scare having genuine impact on a person who cannot run away from it. It's not silly when it's possible, and it's downright horrifying when it happens. This is a monster that knows exactly how powerful it is right now, it can get away with acting like a form of creepypasta character because its impact is entirely real. And now I'm going to go through one more video with you guys before I let you explore the rest of Mary's house on your own, because you have got to see this. About one month later, Mary uploads the video Goodnight and opens with the statement, I'm exhausted. It appears she's been sleeping during the day, which is confirmed by her next bit of text. I don't sleep at night anymore. In the following scene, we have a really cool bit of editing as Mary plays Put the Lemon in the Basket. The family photo in the lower right corner is experiencing distortion. This can be a statement about what's currently happening to Mary's memory of her family, or it could be the forces of the house doing this to express what they want. Either way, it's a nice touch, and so is the scene of Mary laying on the floor, drawing one of the monsters that she's encountered in the house. She says that she's doing anything to stay occupied, and that includes making a small poster with printed pictures of famous figures named Mary throughout history. She still wants to get some idea of who she is. We're told she sets alarms now to wake up in time for night, watching the sun go down as her version of morning. She never wants to get caught asleep at night ever again, and we're shown why. So once again we see that monsters inhabit the house, and they can take more than a few forms. This one seems to be a complete shadow version of Mary, or some form of shadow person. And as before, let's give some praise where praise is due. That effect must have taken so much more effort and time than anybody would realize. I could offer a few limited ideas of how it was done, but it turned out so smoothly in motion, I think the real method used is beyond me. 
You almost never see stuff like this in web series. It takes a real learning curve to pull that off. In the video description, we find out why Mary took so long to run from this thing when it appeared. Paralyzed with fear, I looked into its face and I felt empty, cold and numb. I felt dead. I'm so tired. I bet it will only get worse from here. There's no sense in being positive. And it does in fact get worse. Or rather, the events in Mary's world get worse. But for us, everything just gets better. Something I've been looking for in a web series for a long time now is an effect that only Marble Hornets, Everyman Hybrid, and Tribe 12 ever really had on me. It's called the Potato Chip Effect. Readers who have had some really awesome books that authors and editors knew how to segment for maximum effect will know it as the One More Chapter Effect. Either way, same principle. You have one piece of something, and immediately after, you crave another. So you consume that next piece, get that little hit of satisfaction and joy, and then immediately, again, let's have another, and another, and another, and another. It's like eating potato chips. No, you can't just have one. You have to keep going. Hi, I'm Mary Mary did that for me. This is a series where you can honestly sit down, start from video one, and just go through it all in one sweep easily, because it compels you to watch another video. You want to see what happens. You need to see what happens. The more things happen, the more mysteries we get, and the more mysteries we get, the more answers we want. And seriously, we just want to see what happens. New, crazy things are happening all the time in this house, and it's consistently fun and exciting to see what takes place. I am blown away at the achievement of this series. One girl, her camera, an empty house, and some post-production effects knowledge. That's all it took. That is all it took to make something this great. It's so simple and so easy, yet look at the results. This is why I keep telling you all in so many of my videos, and especially in how to make a web series, you can do this. Does it help to have an awesome camera, a team of friends with skills and resources and locations? Yeah, absolutely if you have those, but you don't need them. This series has given me a feeling I haven't had since the West Records, and reignited feelings that I haven't had since Marble Hornets. This is a winner in every regard in my opinion. I have no idea if you guys are going to love it as much as me, but at this point, I don't even care. I'm so excited to have found something like this. It just rocks. As for what's actually happening in the house and why Mary is here, I have an idea. I'm very certain about the actual concept of the series and its meaning, but I think enough of you are going to get it on your own if you keep watching, and in due time, it will be clear enough to everybody. For now, I'm going to keep my ideas to myself and tell you all this. Please, 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 go subscribe to Hi, I'm Mary Mary and watch it. Please watch this. Sit down and just binge watch it. And if you're curious, check out the Twitter too, where there's plenty of characterization and extra bits of info about the house and Mary herself. This is a gold standard night vision entry, and it reminds me exactly why I started this channel and why I do this. I am so excited to see the development and where it goes. Please, if you feel as good about it as I did watching, come to the comment section here and let me know. Don't let me be all alone in this Mary Mary fan section, okay? That's it for this episode of Night Vision. I feel rejuvenated and inspired. Thanks to all of you for watching and to all of my supporters on Patreon who give me the power to look for more awesome series to cover. Stick around to the end of the video to see the names of all of these wonderful creatures of the night. Thanks for joining me in the dark again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon. Sleep tight. After you go watch Hi, I'm Mary Mary. Haha. <laughs>